Hi and welcome to today's video and today I'm going to be trying something ever so slightly different as far as the video format is concerned and please give me a thumbs up or comment down below if this type of video format is working for you and if you feel that this is the type of format that you'd like to see me doing more videos of in the future give me a thumbs up and a comment in the comment section down below so that I know that this is working for you and you'd like to see more of this type of video. In today's video, I'm looking at a uh, blog post that cropped up just the other day, and it's under the heading of Why Most Runners Don't Lose Weight. And it gives a number of interesting points, and I'll be discuss discussing some of those points as we work our way through them. The interesting first point that is raised here is that the reason why a large number of runners fail to lose weight is that they skip on strength training and it's very interesting to see that the uh, it, all the way through the article they're talking about muscle mass and lean muscle mass so all the type of bodybuilding type of terminologies and in all likelihood we're going to be seeing as we head head down the article that they're going to start talking about protein and protein supplements and all those things all the typical type of bodybuilding things and as you know during the during bodybuilding the idea is building as much mass as possible building as much muscle mass as possible if you're a runner and especially if you're an ultra runner or pass, possibly triathlete or cyclist additional muscle mass means additional weight that you need to carry up the climbs so um, what I would say is as far as the and here if you look over here to make here it says to maintain muscle mass the American College of Sports Med uh, Medicine uh, recommends training major muscle groups for one to three sets of between eight and twelve repeti repetitions two or three days per week. That's your typical gym workout type of schedule, building as much bulk mass as you possibly can with your two to three gym sessions a week where you're training, where you're working specific muscle groups of one to three sets of eight to twelve reps. That is complete bulk building type of exercise, not um, lean endurance type of exercise as what an ultra runner or marathon runner would need. The next one interesting point that, they, that, that that's being raised here in the, in the blog post is eating too much. Um, they say here for the average runner it takes about 30 minutes running at 6 miles per hour to burn about 300 calories. And it takes the same runner just 30 seconds stand, standing in a kitchen eating dark, dark chocolate, sea salt, caramels to consume the same 300 calories. Obviously what we're talk, looking at here is it's all about eating, so simply eating too many calories uh, rather than looking at how the different calories, different types of calorie metabolize within the human body. But I'll get back to that in a moment. So basically, it's talking about that looking at the ca number of calories you eat and the number of calories that you drink and that's the, the and taking in more calories than you burn during exercise is what is leading to the weight gain by runners and they're saying that it's rare for runners to burn more than 600 calories in a single workout absolutely i know of cyclists cycling buddies of mine that routinely burn a thousand and more calories per workout which makes cycling a way better calorie burning workout even though running burns a higher number of calories per hour cycling you can keep going for a larger number of hours and resulting in a higher calorie burn rate and also running on the flat burns less calories than running uphill and the same with cycling on the flat versus cycling uphill so uh, looking over here is anybody that uh, losing weight means you're going to have to be hungry once in a while because that's what creating a calorie deficit does. That is absolute bullshit. If you are eating a high carbohydrate, low fat, low sodium, plant-based, whole food, 
nutrition program. You do not need to be hungry in order to be able to have a calorie deficit. If your training is at the heart rate level that burns more fat and you're consuming a large number of fruits and vegetables, what, me, what that means is by, sim by the simple process of dietary thermogenesis, look it up, dietary thermogenesis burns off the excess glycogen, burns off the excess fructose and you do not store that as fat. If you are taking in fats combined with carbohydrate, if you are taking in protein combined with your carbohydrate, that causes a triple the normal size spike in blood sugar levels, it causes triple the normal spike in uh, insulin production by the pancreas and that's what leads to the problems because you know, you've got your, this spike by the pancreas, additional insulin, the um, carbohydrates get burnt off quickly and the fat gets kept for later use as fat in around all those areas where you absolutely don't want them to be. So the basic gist is stay active but follow a whole food plant-based diet that is and by uh, consuming a whole food plant-based diet you're reducing the amount of dietary cholesterol that you'll be taking in way down you'll be reducing the amount of saturated fats that you'll be taking in way down and that will help you to be healthy and leaner long term how many fruitarians have you seen that are fat how many people have you seen lined up at mcdonald's ordering banana smoothies zero let's just have a look at the what the uh, what Rochelle Brown looks like over here Rochelle Brown the, the uh, person that wrote this blog post he's a certified personal trainer and health coach now a certified per personal trainer and health coach with a nice wide round face I don't know if I'd be that keen on taking dietary advice from somebody that has got a big round face. Yes, I've got a slightly round cheek over here. This is from a dental issue that dates way back. That's a totally different matter altogether. But from my perspective, high carb, low fat, low sodium. Low sodium because every gram of sodium attracts 10 grams of water. It causes you to b blow out and buff out. Remember, taking in additional protein will cause you to retain water and swell out as well and also remember if you're taking in protein combined with your carbohydrates it creates the triple size spike in insulin levels triple size spike in blood sugar levels as what your carbohydrates normally do fruit vegetables in the evening steamed rice potato sweet potato for the win that's my take on the matter. Share any comments, questions, criticisms you have. Share those in the comment section down below. Remember, thumbs up if you like this new type of format. And last but by no means least, hit the subscribe button as well and stay subscribed to my channel for all the new content that comes out to you daily. Stay carved up for the win. I'll see you next time. Cheers. Coach Evers.